Deploy Azure Resource Manager template with GitHub Actions is pretty straightforward. However, there are a few things you need to take care of if you want to be successful. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build, verify, and deploy your ARM templates with GitHub Actions. Let's get into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Coded Dave. Today, we are going to talk about how you can build CI CD workflows in GitHub Action for ARM templates. And stay with me until the end because I'm going to share some useful tips throughout the video that you don't want to miss. But enough talking, let's jump into GitHub. First of all, as usual, let me quickly show you where the code is. In this case, we have this VM folder over here in this ARM examples repo. And inside, I have the ARM template and the parameters file. As the folder says, this is an ARM template for a virtual machine, but of course you can use the workflow we are going to see also for any kind of ARM template. If we quickly go inside the template, you can see it's just a normal Azure template. Usually for complex templates like this, I would recommend to split them in different files and then reference one another. But for this demo, I just have a single file. It's just easier to manage. And it's just a normal one. The only difference I made is in the output section, the default output would be the username. But since I have the username from a parameter, I don't need that as an output parameter. So instead, I reference the fully qualified domain name from the DNS settings, and I pass it as an output with the name of hostname. And we will see later why I do this. And if I go back in the parameters file instead, as you would expect, I have all the parameters that my templates require, and we will see in a second how we can override those in our CI CD workflow. All right, let's see our GitHub action. Let's go back to code, workflows, and I have this VAM CI CD workflow. Let's open this up and let's see what we have here. First of all, I want to say that I'm using this workflow for both push to the main branch and for pull request. And this is an important distinction that we will consider further along in our journey. Then for convenience, I have some environment variables for region and their resource group. And then I have my jobs. So let's focus on the first job first, which I called validations. Now, all I want to do in this job is making sure that my ARM template is formally correct from a JSON standpoint. It's functionally correct from an ARM standpoint. And of course, validate that. To do so, I'm using the ARM template toolkit, as you can see over here. Since I have only one file to validate, I'll pass the path of the file directly. And this action does actually two things. Does a normal linting on JSON and also does the proper ARM functional verification offline. So no need to connect to Azure in this case to validate my ARM template. And I want to do this offline because at least for a first verification, I want to make sure that everything is correct without the delay of connecting to Azure to have that validation. Next, I'm just going to print out the test results using this syntax. So all of this happens offline. When I'm sure that that is okay, then I want to do the online validation, meaning that I want to validate the ARM template already against Azure. To do so, I need two actions. First of all, I need to log in to Azure. And all I need for that are the Azure credentials. I will talk about these Azure credentials in a moment because they need to be generated with a specific command. But before we look into that, I want to analyze the second actions we are going to use, which is the official ARM deploy from Azure. In here, of course, I need a few parameters. I need the subscription ID, which I recommend saving in a secret. We need to give the region that, as I said before, I saved into the environment variable at the beginning, as well as the resource group name. And finally, we pass the template file we're going to use. We're setting the validate deployment mode and the parameters we are going to pass for the ARM template. Now, as I said before, I have most of the parameters I need inside the file already. And in fact, I'm using that file over here. However, there are some parameters that I want to override in my file. I'm not saving the admin password. So the only thing I need to do here is after giving the name of the file, I can specify any other parameter I want to add or override. In a real example, you will have here also the VM name, for example, or any other parameter that you need to generate or take care of dynamically. Before we move to the next step, let me talk about the Azure credentials. And to do so, let me go to the Azure portal. And I want to do this from the Azure shell. To generate the credentials 
In the specific format needed by the GitHub Actions, you need to use this command, azadsp, because we are going to create a service principle. We're going to create it for role-based access control. We give it a name, and the most important part is that we're going to use this dash dash SDK dash auth flag. The SDK authentication and the GitHub Actions that we're going to use are basically using the SDK requires more parameters, and we will see this in a second. And the last flag we are going to need is this role contributor. I would also recommend restricting the scope to a single resource group or at least subscription. But in this case, for the demo, I left it like this. If I execute this command, you can see that the output is quite bigger than usual. And what you have to do is copying the whole JSON output and save it in your secret in GitHub. Let's now go back to GitHub and take a look at the last part of our workflow. And I'm referring to this one. I should say that if we reach this point, it means that the validation that happened here has succeeded. So having done the offline validation first and this online on Azure validation, we are fairly sure that our parameters are okay to be deployed. But I don't want to deploy them from within this job because this is only the validation job. And I want this to be executed for both push and pull requests. So what I do, is uploading the content of my VM folder that, as we've seen before, is the one containing the ARM template and the parameter file as build artifact, because I don't want to check out again the whole repo in the deployment job we will see in a moment, but also because build artifacts are immutable. So I'm 100% sure that if I use the same build artifact in the next job, the files will be exactly the same as the ones we've used and manipulated in this job. Once again, remember that you need to generate the service principle using the dash dash SDK dash auth flag to make it proper. And then you need to save the whole JSON output to a secret in the repo to be used in GitHub Actions. Let's now move to deploy these ARM templates. But before we do so, hit the like button below if you're finding this video insightful or you're just enjoying it. This will make this video to be recommended to more viewers, will help the channel growing and will mean a lot to me. Let's take a look now at the deployment job. It's important for me to deploy only if we're coming from main or in general, if this is not a pull request. To achieve so, there are different ways, but the one I use here is this conditional in the job in which I make sure that this job runs only if we are basically coming from main, which is my production branch, if you will. Also, we need to run this job only after the validation phase, because remember that by default, different jobs in GitHub Actions will run simultaneously. To avoid that, I have this needs clause over here that it needs to wait the validation job before running. Since this for me is a deployment job, I'm using an environment, which I called production, and this will allow me to grab the secrets from that specific environment. And also I can set up this URL as part of the environment definition in which I'm gonna use the host name that is generated by the ARM template deployment. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that the first thing I'm gonna do is of course, downloading the build artifact we've uploaded before, because I'm gonna need the files for deploying to Azure. And right after I'm again doing the logging to Azure. Since I've specified the environment in the job, this secret will be taken from the environment. Lastly, I'm gonna do the actual deployment of the ARM template. This is basically very similar to what we've seen before. Of course, I changed the deployment mode to incremental. I'm taking the subscription ID from the environment secrets. And so in this case, the subscription ID will be the production subscription ID. And I'm using the real admin password because I'm creating a real VM. And with this, we basically have the complete CI CD workflow. Now, if we want to take a look at how this performs, we can go to actions. Let's take the latest that is run. And you can see that we have the validation step, which took only 54 seconds. And we have the deployment job, which as I was saying before, also shows me the URL of the VM, which comes from the fully qualified domain name that is the output of my ARM template. All right, that's it for today. As you've seen, this process is pretty straightforward, but there are some details you need to take care of, like the credentials that need to be generated with the proper command. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this approach. And also let me know if you want me to talk more about IAC, Infrastructure as Code, in a future video.
they'll be sharing some insightful tips that you want to miss. No, that you don't want to miss. Remember that you need to generate a service principle using the dash dot, but before we do so, lots, lots. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.